What it does when it's cracking out again, everybody. My name. I thought of a good one yesterday too. I forgot what it was. Fuck. What about? Mm. What about? <laughs> what about? Mm. Uh, what is your name? Uh, mm-hmm. Cfeezy in the building. I can't okay. I, oh. I, yeah. I am naughty forty nosh dog. There you go. There you go. Oh, I swear I to God, am, uh... don't, don't you fucking <sighs> dare! Come okay, 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 fucking okay, dare, okay, guys. Guys, it's scary hours. It's there scary hours. It's scary hours. I'm not gonna say it's scary hours. It's scary hours. It's H G F G X M I N G. Ah, you such dumb poo. Boo. I, I don't even have a boo fucking thing. Oh, boo. Yeah, you should get. Mm, you I got no make, boo. I'm gonna make one. What can, well, you, no, do? What can you do? Really upset Welcome, you, baby D. Well, hang on, wait, wait, wait. Welcome Sorry, to episode sir. 12 squared of the oh. Bad Habits Podcast. Oh. Oh. Max, Max, good Max. Mathematicians. Wow. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we're here. Uh, so, H-E-F-G-X-M-I-N-G, uh, how was your week, dickhead? Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, Friday, I had people over. We made empanadas, and we played Nintendo Switch. And there's no football this weekend, so all I've been doing is listening to Drake and watching his new football, I mean his fucking, sorry, you threw me off, his new video. There's no football because there's international break. So international teams like England and Australia and all that play, and it's so boring, so I don't watch it. If you're a real fan, you'd watch it anyway. Mm. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Mm. But like, yeah, it's it's shit, so uh, I don't watch it. But that's, Sorry, that's basically me. Just been watching the Drake music video and been watching the listen to the Drake album. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's all that's really really happened this week, and that's all that really matters. Am I right? I mean, it's very true. It's very true. I what believe. else does matter? You know, that's what I'm saying. Nothing at all. This is what I'm saying. Mm. Nothing, Nothing at all. Well then, well, fantastic notion. What was your uh, weekly happenings? Mate, week was pretty sweet as uh, I was busy and it flew by and here we are. Um, but yeah, lots of positive things. Had some good calls with clients. Um, got some mastering jobs coming up. Doing three albums for vinyl nice. for an artist in Australia. Wow. And that's super cool. So I've done vinyl many times and mm. I've worked with this artist before. Um, and yeah, so just talking about all that and getting everything together and just yeah, just negotiating and making sure it's all square and it's I'm fucking pumped, keen as. Um, so that's music news. Um, went on a couple of crazy rides, just, you know, local things. But then today I went for a big one and uh, it was cool. But yeah, last night was it was awesome because I went for a night ride and that's, sometimes that's really dicey and scary. I went to the Evergreen Brickworks and the Belt Line and stuff, but, uh, you know, the lights really save your life. Afterwards, had dinner got a little lit went down to Ashbridge's bay had a fire and my buddy and i were just you know chatting having a beer and we heard this really really interesting fuck it sound like a crunching noise like dead ass and like someone eating like really big doritos across the way we're like mm. what the fuck so i have like a light on my helmet i got a light on my bike we had mad mad torches and there was there was a oh, beaver eating a tree, dude. We and it was a beaver literally gnawing a tree down and building a dam, God knows where. So, oh, you're playing it on the screen. Look at yeah, you. Yeah, I don't know where my camera is. My fucking shit out, bro. So, can you fast forward it like a minute or something? Yeah. But basically, we just saw this cute little guy. I can't there. go any. I don't know what else to do to see it better. Oh wait, no way. I can do it from here. There you go. Yeah. So, so we're just chilling and. We were just, we had my helmet light on and that's what's seeing. And he's just like strategically biting this fucking thing down. And we're like, hang on a sec. Is he actually taking the whole tree down? So there's a couple of trees to the left of it that he actually took off. Maybe did it that day or whatever. But yeah, we witnessed the most Canadian shit I've ever seen. I didn't even know what to do, mate. I was just standing there and commentating. It was piss funny. So uh, yeah, in, in, in like in the next like 30 seconds. Oh, Did they go too far? Anyway. Yeah, too far. Back like ten seconds. Boo, boo, boo. There he is. Here it is. Boom! Look at that. Wow. Beaver man. So then he starts that cutting off all crazy. the branches. Now he can reach them, 
And then we realized he was dragging it over to the water. We're like, we're going to fucking help this cunt. So we ended up grabbing as many other massive branches that had already kind of pre gnawed off. Like, look at him. He's cutting them off effortless, effortlessly. This dude, look at the next one. This is something we couldn't break with our fucking hands unless we used all the force. And he just goes, chomp, chomp, chomp. And, and look at this. I zoom in and the cut of it is flush to the tree. That is the smoothest dude. Look oh, at wow. It. It's oh unbelievable. God. So I was like in awe of nature. I was like fucking Steve Irwin, let's go. And oh uh, we ended up bringing a, dragging a bunch of trees over to help this cunt, you know, to save him time doing the trip back and forth from the water. Probably saved him two hours and his missus must have been pumped because we saw, you know, his, his lady under the bridge where he's building. But look at this guy's tail, mate. Wow. Wow. They're, he's definitely in mates of the platypus. For sure they're cousins. Got to be gotta be so anyway i had a really interesting (laughs) night last night super random and you know i was half half cut had a couple beers and then we see that and it was just beautiful so go nature go canada it was pretty sweet fucking canada that's pretty much my week well then i guess uh your week beats everyone's doesn't it then yeah (laughs) look at this guy he's just chilling i couldn't believe my eyes so yeah good fun what's his name we named him baza baza the beaver i like it Good we name, should have played the, the audio, but like it's a bit too much of me talking, so it's probably good that it's narrated now. But I uh, figure his name out on that video, so I, I will post it at some point. It's on my stories on my Notion MTV Instagram, but I think I might actually post it as a as a, as a a post slash reel. Okay. I like that. I think Why that could not? be an Why interesting uh, thing to do. Nature. Look at that. Look at that. It's, it's very awesome. on brand for you. Nature Isn't Notion. It? Should be Nature your, uh, Oh, good one. Oh, every it. episode. I'll spell it N A Y C H A. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that'll be good. From that'll Australia. Be good. Fuck. Fuck. I'm so Canadian. I got my Canada on last night. I'll tell you that much. You really did. It's pretty exceptional. Yeah. That's uh, top tier Canadiana right there, mate. I don't think anyone can uh, fuck with that. I, I didn't do shit this last week. So, you know, it's the most exciting thing. I went to Guelph to get Vegemite, and that was fun. Oh, G Town. You it's a nice little downtown, downtown area. There. It's actually and super nice. You went to an Aussie establishment, am I correct? Yeah, found coffee. They have three. They have, uh, I think it's Queen or whatever, you, college, whatever it is in Toronto. College they have, Spadina, yeah, that's, that's the OG. College of Spadina. Then they got the one on shore, which is the only one I'd been to. And then they had this one. And this was, I got like one jar of Vegemite left. And I was like, well, this won't do. And this won't uh, do. they were the closest, it's closer to go there than Toronto. So we did that. I'm glad you're getting your beef up. Really? Yeah, well, Toronto is like to go to downtown Toronto. The very minimum is an hour, and this was like forty minutes, forty-five minutes. That's so interesting. Um, You'd go yeah. that far for something that bad. That's uh, <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> oh, I respect it. Dumb cunt. I, I respect it, honestly. God. I, 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 I wonder what really? you'd do if it was actually something good. Oh, my Dude, you have. You really do have a marmite attitude. You are such that a dirty. Is so yeah. good. Yes, is- such a marmite <laughs> cock. <laughs> it's, no, they're, they're all gross. Oh, oh, oh you know, 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 oh, okay. Vegemite. No, they're yeah. all gross. I'm sorry. Okay. They're, they're both disgusting. If I don't know, bro. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, note that down earlier. Marmite Cuck is going to be the episode name. Nice. <laughs> Dan, it's dedicated okay. to Dan. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the other thing. Oh, nothing. That was it. We just got a coffee, went for a fucking walk, and went, this is freezing. Let Barrington shit and got the fuck out of there. Um... <laughs> But the, uh, we're going to do something else, but I forgot to bring my glasses because it gets dark at 1 p.m. and shit. So if I don't bring my glasses, <laughs> I'm like, I got to be careful how far. So we had to get home. We couldn't stay around. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, we got, so for the merch, I'm like for BOS, for our other podcasts, like I just ordered, we have a print on demand thing. So I ordered a bunch of stuff and I got the hats the other day. They came out so sick because I made, like, I got one in gray, in camo, and black. And now it's, like, the full logo that says Get It In Here. The original one, they said yeah. they couldn't do it, but now they can. And it's got a little patch, the little logo on the, the back of the hat here. So I was like, oh, I wonder if I could do some shit, like, set up a Teespring for TMF and just put a bunch of designs and get stuff on hats and, and whatever the fuck if we want, like, the, the kangaroo and the uh, maple leaf logo yeah, and bad. whatever. So considering doing that because this stepped up their uh quality i feel like teespring were a little weak for a bit i'm ordered right. some t-shirts and a sweater so see when they they just take a little bit to arrive but the hats came like within a week which is super quick and i think they're produced like here like in mississauga or something so oh, wow. um 
BOS much. If I don't know if anyone here listening would give a fly fuck anyway. But if people are interested in some sort of TMF or Bad Habits merch, it could be cool to get like to get it on a hat, even with like TMF on the back here, Bad Habits on the front, or you know, it won't be as sick as like what you did mm-hmm. at Lids, where you were able yeah, to do yeah. like the custom sort of embroidery. thing. But it's embroidered. Oh, it's embroidered for sure. But it's okay. not like like this cunt one. It's like a little puffy because there's so many layers and shit. Yeah, there's two layers of foam under it. I, yeah, I, I the foam. Really yeah, exactly. Which is the greatest yeah. hat ever. But it's like, greatest, but yeah. It yeah. took like 50 minutes to do just the front. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's such a long time. It's a bit of a gem. But anyway, thinking about doing that, just doing some little little merch if anyone's interested. Even if we just do it, stuff that we want for ourselves, you just order what yeah. you want. You can make it in any colors and then it's just you'd make a storefront for the public and... Um, super you should, easy. Uh, you should do an advert for Christmas. Get it into time for Christmas for your kids. Uh, yeah, you probably would have to do it like this week. Then probably because it might start to it's be delayed. Do, well, one, do one right now. Do one right now. Make it right now. Just make it all go. Okay, guys, screen share. Share. Okay, <laughs> and just don't say anything and just do it in silence and release the audio. It will mute our mics. No, no. Oh, you mute the mic. No, I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's what, what it'll you? be. Oh, oh, fuck there. Oh, was it button? Oh, okay. There it is. There it is. Fuck, it'd be like an ASMR nice. episode because you'd be like, <laughs> you're a bunch of, bunch of mouth yeah. clicks and fuckery. Do the thing on where it. I tap on the, on the microphone, like. Yeah. Is this on? Yeah. Oh, I could go for a, could go for a wank right now. Fuck. Isn't that, that stupid bird <laughs> doing the fucking Bentley ad when she's like tapping the Bentley car and says, Bentley? And people are like ripping her Ooh. off. You see that? Oh, I kind of no, that like that. I've never that seen so. that, but I like that. There's like a viral ASMR video where some blonde fucking looking Swedish bird just gets, you know, a sick looking Bentley. And then she just like taps the grill and says, with like microphones like right here, she's like, Bentley. And oh. she does like other stuff like in the car and like it's an ASMR ad and she's whispering Bentley. But then a bunch of people have given her shit because it's so dumb. And I think, and so a bunch of people in the mountain bike industry and in the motorsport industry have just, well, not even, no, it's everything but cars are doing it. And they're doing their own little rip-off ads. It's pretty funny, taking the piss. So, internet's right. been, it's okay. pretty good. I like pretty that. I'm here good. for it. Um, the other thing I want to just quickly uh, say is that recently, like a, a week or two ago, we oh, dropped a collab deal uh, with Rorschach for, uh, once again, for BOS Podcast. So he's just going to kick in or are you going to be a dickhole? There you go. Dick. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we're all there yeah. for the brew day. Uh, Dan, Notion has a four-pack for you as well. Um, oh, in the fridge, you. good to go, with your wow, name on it. You. So it came out really good. Uh, it's a West Coast IPA. It was modeled after um, Pliny the Elder. This one right here. Yeah. Uh, so they've done a pretty good job. I think the beer came out great. It isn't uh, as identical uh, to Pliny as as maybe we were aiming for, but it was the first roll of the dice. So we'll uh, we'll keep that going. But I'm I'm really happy with it. The response has been. Um, great so far uh, according to the brewery which is uh, really fantastic has, so it's out now go get it Rorschach in Toronto it's Rorschach Brewing Brewery or Brewing.com something like that you can find it easy do and, they sell uh, it just uh, over the counter there yep, yep. at the brewery nice. singles That's in right. singles too so you can get as many as you like um, and I know that the Beer Bistro when you were there Nosh for Canning yeah. Day uh, were going to take it for um, kegs for the shop for kegs for the for the, for the bar wow. Um, and there's definitely be other places that'll get it. So it's, um, I think it's so, cool. yeah, definitely something warming for the season. Like I'm actually kind of glad that it turned out the way it did. Cause it's kind of fitting for how fucking cold it is. Cause in summertime you want the actual Pliny. And I think in the winter having a little, it is a little way it is it's a little yeah. more warming, a little more fall oriented. That is true with the caramel malts and stuff. Like it's once exactly. again, it wasn't the intention, but it's the outcome is still great. So it's, of course. Uh, it's they did a, they did, they did a sick job. So yeah. grab that now. Alrighty. So this week we're gonna do the TMF Classic Project yes. segment right Ooh, now. Yes. yes and yes. Uh, so the first week was last week, and that was Soul District, the mixtape from two thousand and four. Mm-hmm. Now we are moving. Oh, that's the wrong one, isn't it, dickhead? Now we're doing. So that was like a group project that I did with another whole like squad. Now, this is the first mixtape that was sort of produced independently by the squad pre-TMF, essentially. So before we called it the Moving Fam, this was the first project um, that uh, we did. And this is Notion's debut mixtape. It's my turn from, I saw, I think it was uh, October. It's 2006. Uh, hang on. 
Actually, September 11th, 2006, we dropped that. Wow. wow. Um, so, we've all listened to that. Um, do we want to maybe, do you want to just like, just like I did to the last time, like explain the intention, what the vibe is with this tape, what, you know, what you did here? You want to, yeah. Um, basically, mixtape era times, as far as hip hop's timeline's concerned, um, we were just, this is essentially me learning how to rap in real time and choosing the best beats that I, you know, that we all loved and uh, listened to a lot. And, you know, you can see some heavy influences in here. So this is my attempt at, you know, really putting out a, a project after, you know, C taught me how to fucking structure things properly after I was giving it a shot and it kind of just honed it around. So this is my first shot of doing lots of full songs. Um, sorry, there's lots of freestyles and lots of single verses, but then there's a the couple of full songs. This is me just practicing in real time on beats that I fucked with at the time and still do. Um, and I've got my mates all on it. Like C's on it fucking five times or something, maybe more, six times. Yeah. Um, and then GMC, Becca, uh, SK, and then there's... I don't know how many fe other features. I don't think are Tommy on. was on it, was he? No, nah, he's not. Pre he's Tommy, not on it. Tommy yeah. was like the homie from like 2001. We met on a uh, on a forum. I worked. I wrote for this website, and then he ended up writing for a website. It's called grooveon.com.au. Groove yeah. And uh, we just became mates with Tommy. But the thing was, and this is what you kept saying, Dan, which is probably more for the next mm -hmm. uh, the next week's one, that like you kept saying, you know, anyone who rapped me, hey, buddy. Barrington just came bounding oh, down. Let's have a look at the little What's man. Up, buddy? What's up, buddy? Come here, buddy. You want to see the boys? Do you want to see the boys? Come here. Everyone heard your dog voice now. So Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. That's very cute, mate. Fucking... You're a massive. He's a fish. He's shaking his butt. Come here, buddy. <gasps> yeah, it's Barry. Oh, what a sweet little man. Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> this should be the clip, actually. Scratch the other idea. Yeah, this is the one. He's so good. <laughs> this is an L. He's great. Buddy. He's great. Okay. Hey, Bear. Are you good? Do you want to say hi? Bear. Oh, you want to go down? Sorry. He's like, I just want to say hi to Dad. No, he was waiting at the door. Yeah, he's being cute. I want to show the people down. Mad Fomo. Yeah. Thanks, Stiffaz. He's got a Thanks, Stiffaz. <laughs> Bye, Bear. Um, God, oh, boy. God, boy. He's that was a wholesome there. moment, Stiffaz. Yeah, it was a wholesome. <laughs> yep. You get that parent vibes. Okay, so uh, Dan was saying basically the the i think we probably talked about it in the very first episode where we explained our whole story but basically with the way that you rapped in australia if you didn't rap exactly how you talked then a lot of people didn't like problem. that yeah it mm -hmm. was a problem and we referenced it a lot in a lot of this music so uh tommy who's a became basically my one of, probably my best mate i guess in in australia for a time there he rapped how he spoke so at first on soul district the reason why he had an interlude by himself and we weren't on that interlude um we meaning myself and revelino was because we didn't there was nobody that was doing like a people who rap like us and people who rap like tommy on the same song it just didn't happen True. so like in hindsight it kind of felt a bit cunty to have him have his own track but it kind of is a bit of a classic on its own so i mean like Ridiculous. I feel like I'm not mad at the way that I don't think I could have added anything to that to make it more than what it was. But so at this point, Tommy was a friend, but we weren't really working with him. He was sort of my mate. Whereas like Dub K, the producer and engineer who did recorded this project for Notion was like Notion's mate. Um, yeah. And sort of our worlds were this were very like parallel, but they weren't completely insane like you and dub k did this tape like i didn't really have i think i helped i always helped and kind of got you to you helped you, you helped us get the track list correct and and flowing because i had a, like a rough draft you're like nah switch these around and okay, you helped sounds us, about like, right kind of like you were basically like loosely executive producing it with me gotcha did that yeah. i wonder if we said that i'd be curious executive oh, no, producer I, notion okay no but like i, like, I guess I it mean, was loosely you're right you're i did right. have That's the what final stay of everything but like i i was like what should i do with this because i i did the i think you changed a few things it wasn't like heaps but it was definitely a co situation but this was uh more of you know mine and kiri's little thing because i used to drive to fucking yarraville it's like other side of the suburbs um, other side of the city is kind of far other city it was pretty far. It was 45 minutes on a good run dog and i used to go there multiple times a week so he was using logic like fucking four at the time mm -hmm. maybe three and a half or something like that it was, it was very early in the logic day so i i cut my teeth on um cool edit pro 2.0 or cool for... edit 
recording for, or for beats? Yeah, for recording at the start. And then I was using um, Acid. Pro, and then as soon as I got Acid Pro 4.0 before uh, Sony bought it and it became fucking something else. I forget. I don't know any of these, uh, these software programs from you're referring to. You know yeah. Logic, though. I know Logic, of course. Yeah, Logic was just like, Acid old school. Is. They were just like beat making programs that were popping in like 20 years ago, 15 years ago type of thing that were just okay. like easy to get hold of before like FL, like f- f- original Fruity Loops and FL Studio and all that stuff. Like yeah, most yeah. dudes used um, Cubase, C-U-B-A-S-E or um, Reason. or Acid or Reason were the main ones I would say that people oh, yeah. used for the most part. Then there were the people who were just, just starting to use, like you said, Cool Edit, which was like the easiest, freest one, but had the least features. So exactly. when Just we learned fancy. exactly, and we learned about Pro Tools on Soul District because that's what they had. So when we got our first setup, in I got mine, and then maybe I don't know a few months later you got yours um, in yeah. two thousand five. Th- we got um, Pro Tools, and we got the M Box, which is the actual physical thing. So right now next to me here, we can't really it'll unplug, but I have the Apollo Twin Solo, which Notion has as well. So I got th- this was to replace our M Box from this is probably getting too much in the weeds but anyways Definitely. a different That's time cool. so this mixtape was uh inspired by the time this was like you know the soul district was 100 percent original production by revelino all of it the mm. this tape was maybe 10 percent original production there's a few songs on yeah. here maybe three four that yeah, are produced yes, by other producers um mostly dub k and you i would say is that correct yeah exactly okay um so a lot of it, this was the jacked beat era. This was the beginning, I would say, like this is 2006. So obviously you started working on this earlier than that. Probably 2004 would be my guess. You probably, some of these songs sound yep. like a little more uh, basic and then some of them you sound a lot more complex. So I think some of them were done right up to right, you know, close to you uh, releasing it and some of them were done yeah. earlier. Yeah, you're Not- literally listening to the learning curve. As exactly. It, you can tell which songs are better. Like, oh, that's must have been written at the end or more yes. closer to the release. Correct. I, that was what I was gathering too. So re-listening to all of this really sort of like brings back one. It's like, obviously, I'm very curious to hear Dan's thoughts, but for me, it puts me back in a time. Like all of this music is so time, it's a time capsule. Like when yeah, we made it, what we were thinking, what we were learning about, we were figuring shit out. We were just like, like doing doing this type of approach and everyone this was around the time when like myspace was starting to go and then like if say like a, a hot track dropped you want you know, to say the game which uh, album documentary in 2005 like basically Fire. all the rappers that we knew wanted to kind of get the beat and get on it first so like if they re- release the album then you had to go on limewire and find the beat and then if there was one if they if you could get one if, if someone leaked it or if it was released with a single or you know someone maybe both didn't rap on on our mixtape shit because we couldn't get the beats because they weren't available because unless you if you couldn't chop it yourself yeah and you couldn't find it on limewire you kind of were fucked yes and then those j arms ones used to drop those um like they were Dread. like mixtapes of instrumentals from big songs which was so money when you wanted them shit. but that was a bit later on i think I used to chop up beats as well, like, and I've never, never in my life have been a producer, but I did that many, many, many times for all of the mixtape stuff for my shit to cut the beat up, and I'm a fucking I'm an idiot with that stuff. So it's like, it's it was good. So basically, that's how this was done. It's interesting for me to see the topic matter because this one felt like exactly what you said. You're figuring yourself out. There was a lot of like the typical bragging hip hop stuff. Some of it was after we traveled, so you've got a few references to that um which was cool um a lot of the themes it's funny hearing the themes even hearing on soul district we didn't even have that much to say because i hadn't done anything i hadn't traveled i hadn't been anywhere i was 22 years old i didn't know anything what the fuck do i know to talk about that's why it always pisses me off with youth i'm listening back i'm like the 22 year old us or whatever didn't know shit like really truly did not and hadn't done nothing and it, it was it was interesting to hear whatever the fuck we wanted to say and it was mostly just frustrations about music really it was for the most part a little bit of relationship and girl stuff and um mostly that so looking at at this list i mean some of these tracks was actually pretty because see for me i guess i was only a couple years ahead of you as far as recording at a larger depth but so i felt like at my yeah i felt like my topic matter on this project that i because i was on it the most i guess as far as i guess i felt that you i'd noticing in myself it had broadened from 
the Soul District Soul time. District. But yeah, it was still good. kind of stuck in its own little thing. I was obsessed with the travel and then mad at the, probably the accent stuff and like um, <laughs> shit, shit like that. It was pretty common themes even within mine that I could tell my skill set had gone up and the topics had changed a little bit. So the growth yeah. was like incremental because this wasn't a massive gap between the two. So you could, but you could tell. Um, yeah. The, you had, you also, another thing that was popping at the time was getting a DJ to mix it, which you did not do with this one. Uh, but no. you did the other thing that was popping was to get a host and essentially dub k or kiri who was your uh the the homie who recorded it mixed it yourself. engineer he uh engineer. did a borat he could do the borat voice pretty well so there's yeah. probably like four interludes i'm um, just kind of scanning through it it's always about sex even that was funny because it was like all he talked just about was random. like liking sex it was random but it was also like still one track minded and i thought it was funny because that was tying into our subjects where we were at the time like the headspace and stuff it's just yeah. to, it's just so interesting to me to hear all of this but like the rap some of the fucking bars of fire i was like damn both of us like yeah. had some shit going on with this and it was like okay. it is surprising actually like you're just like what that's yeah. actually like, and, and you know even being as old as it is i had some wow moments too like even just looking at this track list i just i can just remember everything I even remember like recording certain skits for him because I was recording him obviously because he can't do both with his yeah, yeah. setup. So yeah, I remember just like recording him and like having to like fucking put my face into my elbow so I wouldn't laugh because he's oh. pissed <laughs> funny, dude. He was riffing forever. He's a very, very funny person. Here he is one of the funniest human beings I've ever met and probably yeah, the funniest dude. in Australia like is up there. He's like, um, so he's yeah, up. he's very, very extra with the personality, very full energy and his accent game is disgustingly good greek cunts i don't know man they can just do the thing because he yeah. can he can speak all different kinds of dialects of greek and shit like that and he used to do the borat stuff just too well we were obsessed with ali g and he was obsessed yeah, with yeah, borat yeah. to the next level so he's really good at impersonating it so even just looking at this like the borat like sex one like i i was dying for you know minutes 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 afterwards so yeah it's, it's just even looking at the track list makes me remind uh Reminds me of how fun it was to record. Mm. And there were no like cringe moments because sometimes you can listen to your old shit. And you're like, Good. Thanks but for like, saying that. There's sometimes where I'm like, oh man, you sh shut up. Like you keep saying this thing. <laughs> like not right. really you, but like me. Like, cause I'm really not judging anyone else's heart as I'm judging myself. And like, Fair I'm here and I'm like, oh, God, I get it, bro. You went to Toronto. I get it. You fucking well done. You want an applause? Like, I don't know. It's just sometimes I'm like, all right, you know, but that was the life experience and that was what impacted it. So there was like, of course, but there was no like, oh, that was whack. There was nothing that was like, I thought was there was whack definitely nothing whack at all. Like, so now let's see what you thought, bro. Cause your, your yeah. perspective on this is kind of why we're doing it, but it's way more yeah, no. It was sick. There's bars throughout. It's it's fun. It's like soup. The interludes are like so random, but they're so fitting at the same time. They're just so funny, and it just works throughout the whole thing. Like from the intro to the random ones in the middle, and then the outro. Like it's it's so sick. And then like the, the influence throughout is very clear to me. I know when I told you guys about the influence, in some cases you're very surprised, but to me it sounds very much influenced by the game and Fifty Cent. Like especially with a lot of the hooks so similar to a lot of shit yeah. that you'd hear from like get rich or die trying like stuff like that so like overall it was, it was a sick project again yeah it does sound dated of course but like it doesn't mean it's bad at all like it's a sick project i can't lie like it, it is hard it is did so you good. have any fave Stand song standouts or anything like that i'd have to let me go on the track list i've got it up here actually okay it's on the screen in case you can see oh, i might be a little hard to read though i can see some of it on the screen can I play some just mm. to refresh my memory? You could play it from then. It probably wouldn't pick it up. I just, because they're all jacked beats, so they all would get caught. Okay, let me play one second of one. Yeah, yeah, play it. Play like a couple of sex. I liked uh, the ones that really I thought was super dope were um, Receipt, which was the Wayne uh, the Wayne track. Awesome. I thought that was cool. I thought all, all of us really slayed it. And the other one we all really slayed it was Tough Love with GMC and SK. So the two of us were there. Oh, I love That's why I put it at the end. That's exactly why it's at yeah. the end. I know. We used to perform that. So I think I, it's, it's, it's small. Yeah. That that one really, really went yeah. hard. I, the other one, I was sick. Heartburn's always cool. Um, random Rhymes. Yeah, yeah Random Rhymes was... Good. Random Rhymes is a slapper. Um, all right was actually super sick as well, which I forgot was the ninth wonder joint. 
um, Don't Say Nothing. Oh, my God. And Be This Way I as don't... well. There's a few joints on this. Yeah. They were Be just, like, cool. And it was, like, it was more just, like, showing about, like, I feel like if you sort of, like, the subject matter, I guess no one even cares about subject matter anyway, but just for me, I sort of do. If you look away from the repetitiveness of it, which you're going to get through all of these earlier projects, because that's the breadth of what we sort of experienced as early 20s cats. I just thought like it was cool to see the rhyme scheme thing. We we all had us uh we both had like a t- a bit more of a typical way we used to rap too. Like say the I'm trying to think of the yeah. example. There's a formula formal formula. Yeah. No, it's a bit formulaic. Like in the how do you, how do you I'm trying to even think how you would do it. It's always like you had the two bars and then you would have the first few words of the next bar would be like we were rhyming with the latched on. Yeah, into that uh, like last thing, and it was cool. But then if it happened, it happened so often. I think it was just like a style, maybe at the time. Um, mm. That well, the like, f- influences yeah. at the time for that are interesting because, like you know, Dan said, it's got the Fifty Cent fucking game sort of G Unit ish style, and that's fucking one hundred percent accurate. Also, Dipset, dude, heavy. Like, so much, oh, so heavy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I was loving Dipset. I loved you, Wells. I it's love going Cameron. down. You got down and out. You got two, exactly. two, had two joints. references in there. So that's a huge influence that um, I have to put up there as 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 strong as uh, the game and Fifty Cent influences. It's, it's definitely more the game's rapping was so cool, and then the way Fifty's hooks are ridiculous. Like that's that's be real. It's the hooks. I think ones. the swivel your middle, swivel your middle is the one which has like a, basically a Fifty Cent hook right there. The reason <laughs> that, 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 could, that could have been on Get Rich or Die Trying. Hundred percent. Word up. Respect. Those kind of joints were purposely done because I knew that we were performing at, well, did we start performing at clubs at that point yet, see? Because, like, those songs were meant for them. Yeah. We were doing club music because, like, this launch was at, like, a a venue that was a hip-hop night, but, like, we did the the one we're going to do next week. We launched that at, like, a full-on club, and we'd done other club performances. So I think, and, like, we've been, uh, like, you didn't come to those, but, like, CM Becker got booked in Adelaide a couple times. Yeah, and like we go out there and perform at a club. I feel like the club sets are so annoying. Like no one who's just trying to enjoy listening to Nelly and Ja Rule is gonna be like, Oh, let's hear these fucking guys. They don't give a shit. Like it's a yeah. bit of an awkward situation, but they those were the contacts that kept booking us and stuff. So I was like, Okay. So I think that's why we were doing those type of joints. So it was a bit of a mix of kind of like more underground rapidy rap stuff and then yeah. the clubby ones. Like they come in with that, which is that like Timberland game song um yeah and, and all the 50 joints yeah, and stuff yeah, like that fantastic yeah, yeah. so like the, when i hear these actual it, if you take every beat that it, that's in this list and you listen to the real songs be, that's heavy all those artists artists are a heavy influence to me like you know ghost face like fucking dude black thought the roots like if you look at all of the people that who made the originals mm-hmm. it's just that's a good way to to sum up where i was at at the time because yeah. that's that, that's yeah, it's totally dope. So Dan, did you have any standouts from when you're scanning that then? Uh, Defo, random rhymes, and Sylvia Middle are the ones that Thirty-two really Face. Remember, yeah, those yeah. Well, those are sick. Back to back tunes. Yeah, yeah, it finished really strong this one because I thought Renan was cool as well. Because Renan was also Run- was that a game I, beat? Who was the very, original yeah, song? Game, yeah. Okay, um, because I forgot so much of this. So not it's only was so this short, reminding me so good, super short because we just do like one but, but we, we used to perform this a lot like that's why i'm yeah. sort of like it because we performed like almost every week um back in the day at that shout at out to litigates them. events yeah evelyn shout out to litigate but yeah so this this was like the first project so i'm going to put this in the uh it's just notion.bandcamp.com there's a whole bunch of stuff there so i'm going to put this in the description so y'all can check this one out but this yep. is yeah this is great this is it's been fascinating so i've already listened to the next one so that was the first cm becker one for next week and now i'm listening to the second notion mixtape i started that today so just sort of getting ahead and yeah. dan i guess i'm going to give you the next one where are you up to dan you listen to notions next uh, tape right so i've listened to world domination yeah okay so then you gotta do cm right. becker volume two which i think i gave you yeah. already okay yeah yeah, yeah yeah beautiful um but we're getting there it's cool this is fun i'm really oh, really no, genuinely no. enjoying the process of all of this it's fucking dope yeah yeah exactly um Sick it's cool to get everyone's everyone's feedback and stuff so i feel like since this i already started like talking to more people like, i do I, I guess i can say here i was talking to clarity the other day i'm gonna catch up with him this week just talking about music because he's taking right. a bit of a people might remember my clarity been on the pod a couple times um 
produced my last album and stuff. And I think even he's taken a bit of a hiatus. And I've never known him to take a hiatus uh, from yep. music. So I think mm. he even st- he sort of just living life for a bit. But he's also like ten years younger than me, more. Yep. Um, so he's like. Uh, he started super super young so he's probably just living his life for a little bit you know handling biz and, and get back into it so this is already i feel like it's positive i feel like i'm thinking about it talking about it more with different people and like you know it's already um yeah helping just to go back and like see where you've come from so you can see where you want to go next some good shit so cock noses so we've got a bunch of different uh stories here and then we'll hopefully get to a tier list at the end so uh just quickly noted so a producer speaking of the music of our music a producer we've worked with since he was like 17 his name's styles for he um was from byron bay up in new south wales and then lives in melbourne he basically is a gone on to like you know he his first big break was producing for like chameleon air and they did a remix with snoop and Busta in like i don't know oh five or six or something like that like early on and um he just kept kind of going from there and and he's done super well he did 60s uh falling a flying album which i think really blew him up they both Mm -hmm. really got big from that so styles just won an aria on the week i think he won a few like there's this guy he's a singer called troy sivan t-r-o-y-e-s-i-v-a-n he's an aussie guy and i don't know if y'all watched the idol on uh with the weekend show um nope. did you see that dan you saw the idol right the idol. the weekend the weekend and oh Johnny no Depp's no I, I didn't watch it because i knew it was bad I, I it was really it. bad so this kid was in <laughs> that so basically styles produced a song for him that one he won like producer of the year and a bunch of stuff so it was pretty it's cool fine. to see that, and it was funny because his manager was also a friend of ours who rapped on all of it, like my projects, because I was cool with him. He was on Salt District, he's on like the CM Becker stuff. So it was funny to see him, like used to have the shaved head. Now he's got like hair and wearing a scarf and looking all music industry and stuff. It looks pretty very funny. fresh, yeah. Um, which is good old Buffer. Shout out to Weez. Shout out to Styles, and they also got fucking hands Buffer, and they um <laughs> he taught us like footy stuff because he used to play footy and he was like. They used to call him Buffer. <laughs> <That's what laughs> For some is. reason. Uh, oh, no. I think it's off his last name. Do you have to pause um, Buffer? I don't know. Cause, yeah. I think it's because of his last name. Otherwise, I would definitely pause yeah, that that's word. That's true. Sure. Yeah. For that's sure, what it was. Sure. Yeah. Otherwise, it's um, possible. Stars got nominated for a Grammy as well with the same song for um, well, for yeah, random, pretty random, random applause, applause for fucking yeah. Flake. <laughs> you love to see it. The cunt was sleeping yeah, on my true. bedroom floor once. You know, we worked with. He reached out back in the day because he heard my shit when we were doing it with like the Battletown dudes, and because he was working with Battletown, and then we did a bunch of songs together. And he's a sick cunt, good dude. Um, boom. Respect. Okay, this is Dan's segment of the pod right here. So. On Friday, this little uh, relatively known artist, uh, Drizzle. I don't, if anyone's, I don't know if people know him that well. They yeah, they might not. That. So, like, don't feel bad. Go look it up. His name's Drake, D R A K E. You look him, Canadian guy. You might have, you, you might not know his face, but anyway, he yeah. released Scary Hours 3, which was tacked mm-hmm. onto the end of uh, For All the Dogs, which is a cheeky little way to get some more streams on a mid album. But. Mm. Mm-hmm. We were very excited for Scary Hours Three because of the level of midness of for all the dogs, mm-hmm. and I think he's mm-hmm. aware of that. So he essentially pulled a Jack Man. Everyone was saying the shit was whack, just like everyone said Jack Harlow's that album with the the Fergie song on it and all that stuff were whack. So mm-hmm. Jack Harlow came back with this ten track soul beat, minimal thing, just rapping, telling stories, fire. Drake did the same thing essentially with six songs with Scary Hours. Very, very, very similar approach. Just straight up bars, one song with a little bit of like singing. Um, mm-hmm. Some songs basically with no drums and just a sample. Okay. Really only one feature with uh, J. Cole, which is spectacular. But um, should we do like a full walkthrough? Yep. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, well, the best way I think I should what I'll do I'll pull up the Spotify Drake Scary Hours three so I can have it here. Yeah. Actually, let me go Scary Hours three Spotify. There you go, you little bitch. Bring this shit the fuck up. You know the vibes. All right, mm-hmm. all right. You actually, you know what? Let me share the thing like that right now. Screen share. All right, boom. So what this is the the thing for this called it for all the dogs Scary Hours edition. Once again interesting thing interesting approach but i think that was just a a a play to get if 
scary hours is attached to this and that gets a lot of plays then that is going to push for all the dogs up in the far as the streaming as far as like a mm-hmm. o- overarching thing very cheeky but uh not mad at it so they made it in like a disc one disc two type of scenario uh i was trying to see the um the plays on this but i guess on the web it's not showing it's so it should go, that's weird yeah, yeah. So it is a little strange. So, do you want to just go through? So, let's put it like as disc two here on Spotify. So, uh, Daniel, just talks through the tracks. Okay, uh, Red Button. Uh, let me think. Red Button is sick, yeah, because yep. no drums. And he literally only rhymes two words. He rhymes decimated from literally the first verse to all literally the to the end. all the way through to the, like, halfway. And then he rhymes another word all the way to, through to the re- remainder of the song. It's so sick. It's just, Impressive. it's just like I did that in 2017, but whatever. Deluxe yeah, whatever. rap. Oh yeah, true, true, true. Whatever. Whatever. It's like whatever. upper echelon rap. It's so good. Like yeah, the stuff he's he's done. Oh, on this, it's so good. It's ridiculously good. This is what we were hoping for. All the dogs was going to be, but I think his people really, really weren't fucking with that. He wanted to show that he could rap again, and he just chose mm. not to, which is essentially mm. the message of this project. Yeah, think, easy. How do you feel about the first song being produced by Lil Yachty? No, so Yachty's involved in all of these things. I don't know if he produced it, but he was like either. I thought it meant he was a writer. Right now, and produced by Lil Yachty and Overcast. He's done like yeah. Lil Yachty and Overcast did the third song as well. So are what they? Are your... So it was production, not right songwriting. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, it's written by Drake, Overcast, Lil Yachty, and DeMello. Okay, so Tiff was looking this up in the car when we were listening to it, and I thought it meant that maybe Yachty had contributed to the bars. I didn't know Yachty made beats. Neither did I. I'm if shocked. he makes beats, I'm... then good for him. And Exactly. I was like, I what feel the good fuck? about it. Job cunt. I feel fine about it. I'm I just shocked. More of this. But like, who's Overcast? That's my other question. Like, who the fuck is that? Yes. Some cunt. Some Some good cop. That overcast. That's tight. I like it a lot. I'm here for it. Yeah, it was um, off to a good start. Okay, this is great. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, it started off sick. So yeah, that's sick. Really cool. yeah, and then uh, the second track stories about my brother. This was mm-hmm. cool. It yeah, was cool. I didn't know who he was talking about. It seemed like a, a series of stories of mm. different people, but it was hard yeah. to tell who he was like directly talking about. Like, you don't know. Everything's all speculation, right? Everything's all very much speculation. But it was sick. The stuff that he was, I feel like maybe Joe Joe Budden in the line where he's like saying about you're not Kobe Bryant to us, something like that. Like, mm. but maybe Joe could have been he could have been spoken about there, but I don't know. But regardless, it was a six song. Yeah. Also, yeah. who's uh, Conductor Williams? That's the producer of this. Track. I don't know who he is, but he is so sick. So so he's sick. So sick. I don't know who he is. So I'm already I already introduced to two producers off the first two tracks that's fucking crazy so i'm gonna have to look who that kind of is and what his uh credits are because i'm just gonna have to because he's making like griselda kind of shit who is that very this, dirty this conductor that guy conductor yeah. Williams. Yeah. okay um i was gonna try and look and see i feel like this genius is it's too much to oh, he did 8, 8 a.m in charlotte as well okay yeah, he, did he did that did. shit he had some good did, good yeah. a lot of west side guns Crazy. Okay, cool. He did a lot of. I feel like he's dissing Yay according to all of this. Did the song Glory, well, Glory, brother, like, yeah. brother, brother. Mm. All right. Um. Oh, that's why Easy. I didn't do it. So I might just go back to this because I think it's gonna be too hard to do it. Okay. So the stories about my brother, beautiful at the shoe fits. This one was extra cool. This was like talking about made me feel oh, sad good. for people in this world. Like it was stories mm-hmm. about different types of dudes and women. You know, the, the same chick who fucking i don't know always trying to get the richer guy or and ends up having an only fans and like ends up fucking a basketball player and like the dudes who were trying to pre- i don't know it was interesting and uh, i don't know if he was dissing anyone specific but he, this was the one with the james harden reference right yeah yeah it says like he pointed at the screen and it was james harden it was like wow but it was so good like the the rhyme schemes in this whole song is so sick like it's just ridiculous how good this song. I think this one might be my favorite one. This was a, we, it was a definitely a banger. About, um, he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, um, again. 
he presses yeah. on her link tree and she's sucking dick on cam <laughs> he's like not yeah, Mrs. it's like not mrs independent no it's quite funny which is pretty funny yeah he was definitely like super smart ass it was super cool i wonder if very smart yeah see the james harden thing while Drake, historic scorer in the sniper, and also be poker fun, infamous reputation for a prioritizing script clubs and nightclub. Okay, cool. So I feel like you gotta like look all of this because it's sometimes it's like, you know, you, you can sort of see this on here, but talk about you know the chick goes to Miami on Instagram and renting boats, boats and stuff, which I don't know motherfuckers been doing that. Like, <laughs> anyway, um, it's it's pretty funny hearing all the, all of that stuff. Like that's I think that Tiff yeah. that was her favorite one. She fucking love that one that was a good one so funny the stuff that he's saying as well is like the rich people rap that he does and it's like she settled for an nba star that's through playing instead she got an nba fan that's 2k and mm. stuff like that is so funny or like speaking about spit like spitting so splitting a bottle between five of the bros is just so funny yeah see that's what i'm saying like calling out the different types of individuals like yeah, i don't yeah. relate to it but I know I've seen them online, but I don't know them in person. Thankfully, mm-hmm. I don't know about mm-hmm. y'all, but I don't fuck with humans like that. But hearing it, I'm just like, oh man, that's what I said before. It makes me feel like sad for people. I'm like this is the type of men that women are dealing with, and vice versa. Like they both sound like idiot archetypes. Like the dudes sound like tool bags because they're trying to yeah, fucking yeah. prove something they're not, and the women are always just trying to like get more out of a situation and sort of like, you know, everything. No yeah it's it's interesting it's interesting um but so far all the productions are pretty like the that griselda lane i would say would be fair um yeah for sure uh track four was wick man i guess that's referring to john wick and apparently this is the one with um uh, uh push this i think produced by the alchemist represent which is cool eh unbelievable the, dude when i saw this on his instagram so he, for some reason i follow drake as well but his shit doesn't come up on my fucking thing unless i go to his page but alchemist shit comes up straight away and i was like fuck yes cunt because he's so underrated alchemist is like the new school premiere he's unbelievable um he's done so much shit with uh griselda etc he's he's down for the fucking the, the uh the culture bro he's one of the best producers ever yeah, which is uh and he can do so many different kinds of shit, but this one this is you know, this is classic. Uh, oh, when he says is... like the empty clips, but it yeah, meant yeah. empty C L I P S E, like actually yeah. the ah. clips. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. I heard about a bunch of Fisher T disses and I was like, I don't know, did he actually diss him? But then Yeah, that's of, he was saying things that... might be adding up. He goes, I remember dudes was joking about some tick tick because that's when he was like over your 40, hunched over like he 80. Tick tick yeah. tick. Remember on that, how much time he got that man six six because we had any use of the six thing in uh, Story of OJ. Story of Adidon, sorry. Adidon. So, um, yeah, it seems like he was, he was definitely decent on that <laughs> one. And I think, did he diss Kanye in this one? I think he disses Kanye in this one as well. He said, no, he mentions Yeezy. He mentioned Yeezy, not in this one. There was another song. I, okay. There was one song where he actually just name checks Yeezy and then basically saying, like, Harry, you wanted to call Truce and they had his head inflated or something. Oh, that could be the stories about my brother, maybe. The la- yeah, the that, that would have been stories about my brother. Because he said something about people running to J Prince. J Prince, yeah. Yeah, wine to J Prince, Prince, like some grape girls, yeah. That was such a good. I, d- I didn't get that bar until I was like, "Oh, why? Oh, oh, yeah. why? Oh, come on now, come on!" I get on. it now. I get it. Like I don't I know. Yeah, I don't know who because he said. So that's why I feel like he's talking to, about all different people on this one. Um. Anyway, it's it's. Uh, I it's love so much. The, the instrumental on Wickman. It was like the most unique one. It was just so cool. Yeah, it sounded tight. like it sounded like alien shit. Like it sounded like out of this world. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it's such a sick instrument. And it's so funny because um, okay. football Twitter, football Twitter was getting crazy because one of the product, like the the writers, was K De Bruyne, mm-hmm. and there's a footballer called Kevin De Bruyne. He's probably he's probably the best footballer in the world right now. And everyone's like, oh my god, Kevin De Bruyne wrote this song for him. He done this. He done this. And there's a picture of him and Kevin together. And mm, Kevin De Bruyne put a picture of uh, 
him and Drake on his Instagram saying, oh, you're welcome for the assist, blah, blah, blah. But then it's actually not him who done it. Mm. But it was just like, football too, it was like, what the hell? Like, no one's ever seen another K De Bruyne like that. It was just very random. Huh. Okay. It's very interesting. Also, like the bar where he says something like, uh, point me to a bo- point me to your boss. You're the receptionist. Like yeah, that. that was a good one. That was a so that's one. why I don't know who he's dissing a lot of the time. I, like it's it's very much in Drake fashion where it's uh, vague as fuck, subliminal, mm-hmm. super subliminal. Um, so then the next cut, which is my favorite one, is called "Evil Ways" with uh, J Cole. This yeah, is spectacular. Sorry. And they just it's go just, back and forth. Couldn't believe they were going back and forth. What was your first? Like, did you stop the track and run it back? Because I was tripping when I heard J. Cole come in after four bars. I didn't stop and pull it back, but I've listened to the whole project like six, seven times now. It's always like, yo. Every time it's on, if someone talks, then I'll pull it up. Like, if you're in the car and playing on, Tiff says something, no, 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 run that back, run that back. It was so cool, and this is inspiring. This is the type of shit we need to do. I love this so much. That's what I think. Do I? Yeah. Was. Like we've done it before, but not to this level. I don't think yeah. the cool shit about this was the. Um, I feel like Drake has his way of rapping to me. That's like Royce of Five Nine, where it's like you rap way over the bar, over the bar. Like, you know what I mean? Like you won't, it won't just like be like it'll just rock with the music. Like it's on beat, obviously, but like he'll just rap one rhyming thing, and then the next one will probably go for two to maybe even three bars before the rhyming comes back again, and he's just saying stuff until the rhyme comes back, like. Um, I always right. felt like Royce Royce did that all the time. It's not my favorite thing of doing it, but for this song, and then like say if one of them does it, then the other one will, will just like pick up the rhyme scheme. And I love that the same rhyme scheme the whole time. So 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 sick. Super. Sick. Um, it was. I can't believe them going back to back. That's insane. Yeah. Like, I'm guessing. I'm like it, it makes me respect Cole a lot more because remember when I first moved to Canada, yeah, and I used to shit on Cole. I don't know if you remember. It was like when I first How first moved. Dare you. I used to show on Carl. I used to be like, no, I used to think it was fine. And I just didn't understand the hype. Like, I didn't get it. But like, this guy is top three easily. It's like, disgusting. he's the big three. Like, he's way beyond, like, Kendrick. I don't know how people can even compare Kendrick. Like, he's so far beyond. Now I feel like there was a there was a time when he wasn't, and Cole like, was clowned a lot for being a little corny and stuff. I think now it's like completely. Oh, uh- Pardon? Cole grew up like properly. Yes, and this is what we were t- talking about with the for all the dog stuff. Is that like this whole six songs shows that absolutely unequivocally Drake can do it, and I feel somewhat validated in the criticism because, of, but he needed enough of the internet to give him shit for him to come and do this. So it was more just like reminding people that he can, and when he doesn't, it just seems like you're you're not fulfilling your potential. And this to me, yeah. whilst like he doesn't you don't need 12 songs of fucking Griselda no, stuff every exactly. time but I'm just you know it gave us re- none of that exactly it's refreshing to see him do like proper bars and proper fucking songs that have uh, you know lots of shit saying I mean it's just clever so, like the, especially the tracks with that don't have any drums I bet, I bet you a bunch of Drake fans haven't heard a fucking song like that properly for a long time so like this you know, reminds, reminds yeah. everyone that he can still fucking rap i know he's got some ghost writers on some songs but for the most part he's driving the bus and i think he's done a fucking good job lyrically on this i thought it was excellent mm. like i feel like this is his best like when you pick out his best individual songs this yeah. is up there with survival yeah. middle of the ocean like it's just and all of this as well is that level it's not even yeah. just like one song it's like every single one is that level it is so ridiculously good. Like, yeah, it's a fucking good one. Short it's and sharp so is the best part, I think, as well. Because like, there's yeah. some of the one, one one song's like six minutes forty five. Like, dude, that's fucking crazy. I was like, what's happening? Yeah, but it was great. It was so I hope the cunts don't get bored with it. It's interesting as well because I feel like on this this is one of the few rap songs that I've seen from a lot of big artists that yeah. isn't very much uh, like religious heavy and i feel like and i have no issue with that but i feel like he's being way more honest about this because mm, he's been yeah. like because you see with travis scott suddenly i feel like it's because of yay because yay's now made rapping about religious religion a lot cooler and i feel like you see with travis scott is two songs about like him being so religious and faithful and stuff but then i feel like that wasn't what he was originally preaching or is maybe his true self or maybe it is but then drake is like the first one i've seen in a long time say like 
oh, he's questioning his faith and like he's not too sure what he believes in anymore where, as opposed to everyone being like, no, 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 I'm fully religious now, all of a sudden, which hmm. is very interesting. Okay, but the, even just questioning all that stuff out loud is the journey we want to see the human go through, particularly yeah. when they're as skilled as Drake at, at telling the story. That's the stuff it feels like if he's not um, giving that, then it's like, oh, well, then are you selling yourself short a little bit? Like, cool, you can do the club stuff, and that's fine here and there, but when you got 23 tracks of basically the same shit, when yeah. he comes and drops six tracks, if you sprinkled these six songs throughout those 23 and cut some of the dead weight from that, so... it would change the quality of that album because then oh. immediately it's more balanced. You can that's replace really... six songs easily with these six. Yeah, and it would just be a superior... But also, I think that's kind of unfair because I feel like these six songs could go into any one of his projects and still be the, the best six. Potentially, potentially. Um, okay. But it's like but he even, needed the... even more so in this, and even more so in this. I agree with that. Mm. Yeah, more also... more so with this one. Yeah, yeah. It's like I mean, he needed the that... motivation. Otherwise, yeah. he because he didn't do it, so he needed the motivation yeah. to do it. So I find that peculiar. That like, <sighs> do you know what it is though? Tiff was saying to this to me, and this is curious what y'all think of this. There was it was like Cardi B or something did like a song where she talked about something real, like some shit crazy shit happening in her life of abuse of something like that. And that song did the worst. So then she's like, Well, I better go back to talking about my pussy and stuff, because unless I do that, no one cares. And I think that's a bit of a problem. There was like, we all bitch if they don't deliver something like this, but when they do, people don't support. So what do you what are you supposed to do as an yeah, artist? Exactly. It's a terrible middle ground to be in. So Yeah. It's, no one's uh, ever going to be happy because everyone just wants nostalgia. So it's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame. I mean, then there's but that you, too. So it's. You know what I did love about this one? Yeah. This mm-hmm. is why I love J. Cole. Yeah. He jumped on the track and his first line was, and now we're linking like we freed the slaves. And I was yeah. like, this guy is just. From then, I was like, I know this guy is just like killing it. Like he's just, just so sick. Yeah. The Frito Lays line was tight, was tight as fuck yeah. too. And now my paper folded like when teachers don't want your classmates to see your grade. Like, come yeah. on. Which is crazy. So good, man. Yeah. Was, That's a bar. There's so many, there's so many, there's so many good ones. And it's not even about the, the words every time. Like the, the last part of the part where it's he's like, delivery as well. Coke got their nose bleeding like the seats where you can't see the stage high up in arenas where they see their faves, AKA me and Drizzy Drake, we eat a wave. You're like, oh yeah. This is it's so just... sick. It's just such the, the delivery is exceptional. Like it's so really fucking ill. Or even that last one, like, um, hard to blame him. Lord knows that this game can be depraved. Scary. I was undefeated. Y'all should be afraid. It was just so, it's just, it's, the bars themselves aren't that spectacular, but it's just so sick. It just works so well, and I have such a blood because the song's called "Evil Ways." They took that through the whole song, and I know how hard that is to do. That I did this one. I think I talked about before the the, the one track doing the the like twenty four bars each with two rhymes per thing. So it's like forty eight rhyme schemes with the same one for the whole time. It was easily the most challenging thing I've had to write as far as technically and try and get something that made sense and sounded cool. It's and cool. Yeah, that's the they hard did, part. Drake did that a lot on this project. I found that I tried to do that when I haven't written for a little bit, but all the things that the last few things I tried to do were at the very least have like eight bars with the same rhyme scheme on every verse, yeah. even in the 16 to always have that. So to hear so many songs on this doing that, my the rapper in me fucking was like throbbing, mate. Rock solid. Boner, mate. So good. It so was fire. Good. And then uh, the last song called You Broke My Heart, that one was a little bit of a uh, sing songy thing happening. Not too um, bad. Yeah, it had, it had it like an like actual chorus as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah it was, it was, I really liked it. It was a it was great cool. song. Like, yeah. So good. And like his. Probably some kind of favorite song of the album. Mm. Yeah, you could, you could definitely say that. Like, and it's having probably, Smiley's. Um, Ad libs on it. Oh so my god, sick. that was hilarious! Good cameo. Yeah, I was like, "What the hell?" That's so sick. Like, what? I've never ever heard. Most big rappers would never do that. Because yeah. Smiley's not even—he's not even that big. He's just a Toronto local rapper, yeah. and now he's got he's his actual local. main ad libs on a Drake track like that. That is insane. It's, it's tight. Well, he's done a song with Drake, so it's not. He has. Yeah, he's co-signed yeah. for a while, but it's just funny because it's like, you know, Smiley's not incredibly like lyrical or anything, but he's just a funny kind of. Scent. Apparently, he's a nice bloke. And I don't know, obviously he's got a good rapport with Drake and he sort of gets sorted out. That's a crazy look, dude, because his stock's going up. He'd be pumped ass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
overall though yeah man this slap it's got a lot of replay value because it's only six so. songs yeah. um yeah but truly genuinely enjoying it um a lot like normally i'm at a stage i don't like to hear yeah, things happy. too much very, yeah that's fine <laughs> I knew you would like it like fine this is what we're waiting for though when we heard this mine and yours notions exact reaction was like fucking let's go this is what we're talking about so we're not yeah. like even from mm-hmm. the last those episodes where we were like you know clickbaiting a bit with like the just, controversial like getting he was like saying okay i still like i can still do some fire let me just i'm gonna just yeah you know, no? it was, mm-hmm. it was and good, then apparently he wrote good, it in five he days wrote all of the songs in five days i think he said he started okay. from nothing he didn't have beats didn't have nothing so they did it all yeah nothing yeah in that time days. which is even cooler so um i thought that was yeah. really dope but, uh, why are we i know recency bias yeah yeah and i know obviously this is this is probably the best music we've heard what good like probably since donda like yeah. good music since we've had since donda where does this go in terms of best obviously it's six songs so it's hard to compare but where does it go in terms of his best projects because yeah. i'm under the impression that this might be one like top three because this is i don't know i've I'd never say, seen I'd someone release this many tracks obviously it's only six none nothing in, within that six is less than a nine out of ten like nothing Hmm. So I, could pr- I, I don't think like I would disagree. It be, like it'd be like top five easily, and like oh, it depends on where you're slotting it in in the top yeah, five. I think that's a fair point. I think top five like, easily. Like it might best. be three, four, or five. It can't, I, I don't know. Yeah, probably wouldn't be one or two, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah, like, and you're right about the recency it's bias bad. too. Um, yeah. But not really, because we had a recency bias on the opposite side. Like for all the dogs, for me, yeah, it would true, probably true, be true. his last. Like I probably like that less than say if I bet you I'd like it less than the future one. Um, yeah, which I hated at the time, but I bet you I don't think I'd be that mad at it now. I haven't gone back to listen. I, I know I need to, but like, yeah, mm. I feel like it'd be top five easily. I'd have to really like just look at it again, but I don't think that's unreasonable to say that. I just don't think I've seen music this good for a good like what seven years since like it's better than Scorpion. So beyond oh, from him, okay. like I. I I'm talking. No, I'm talking about in general. Like, what has been this good though? I'm, I'm now think. I'm talking about in general. Because like, okay, the Kanye run in the 2018. Kanye well, the Kanye, Kanye run, album, like yeah. the five albums: Ye, Daytona, uh, Tiana Taylor, Nas, all that. Um, he also Ye, Do- Jesus. Lord. Yeah, Jesus King would have been in that in the last Jesus seven King years. Lord. Donda for sure. Donda two. I got to go back. But Donda, we listened to a bunch of it the other day. I was like, oh man, this fucking goes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Fuck, I'd have to think. I'd have to think a little harder. But I mean, you're probably right that there hasn't been something I've been like super excited about. As in, like you hear it and it doesn't let you down, and then you keep listening to it and it still doesn't like let you down. Nothing has let you down because obviously there are some projects where you're like, okay, this is good, but okay, let me skip this one song. Let me skip this one as well. Like, yeah, but like, this is like unskippable. It, I, I granted, I, it is six songs. Exactly, which makes it easier. Uh, like, all things said, though, I feel like, to me, what I was most excited about was this is a style of music, essentially the notion I've been making for, like, 20 years, give or, like, for the most part, as far as that style. And it's never really, aside from College Dropout, like, no one, and a bit of Dipset, but it never had, like, like, there wasn't, like, every song in the charts was a soul beat, ever. I don't think that yeah, was ever, yeah, like, yeah. a thing. Yeah. And, like, for me, what's uh make would even make me consider like doing music again which is interesting having this come out right at a time where we're reviewing our back catalog to see where we came from to then look into the future about where we could go with it hearing this now is so fucking uh what's the word like uh encouraging that like oh the two biggest artists you know all the song jet cole on secret recipe even with with the id um you know just the whole yeah more right you know people like corday doing that shit um you could you know the jackman album was basically this exact same concept um obviously drake superior i think as far as the things he did but i really appreciate jack for that so it's like i don't know man are we gonna hear go there's hope there there's like another there might be another resurgence of that uh you know of our shit so that's why our collaboration album is going to be out of out of control. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Actually, work. 
yeah that's what i'm thinking maybe you could actually do more than it could have because maybe when we were putting out this music consistently like people always fucked with it but it was never like on the level of something like this that there wasn't anything this 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 big aside from kanye but that was 20 almost 20 years ago so i don't even remember if back then it was like it was unusual so it would have been probably more niche and then dip said around you know like with the heat maker stuff was also kind of niche too like mm-hmm. it was like there were hits obviously there were charts but it wasn't once again it wasn't you know how, like when crunk was there everyone was doing that shit or like you know the sound like the the coming with that joint from the game and like dirt off your shoulder like that that era of timberland where everything sounded like that like right. the soul beats never really had this like major thing so i don't know where it could go but i'm at the very least just encouraged that people are like these guys are flying a flag for it and then maybe there's going to be more artists doing it and the best part is tiff reckons that the thing is that not everyone can do it because not oh, all of that's these people are so true no because they're not this not, none of the yeah. new gen rappers can do that. no one that's what i'm saying like, I... all, all day jack harley that's it that's it yeah yeah Word you're 100 percent and that's why I always said, I feel like we can do what they can do, but they can't do what we can do. Because, like, yeah. we could do the double time. We probably couldn't do, like, the auto-tune hooks. I mean, if it worked on it, I probably could, but I don't yeah, think... I think anyone can do that. You're probably right, just I never can... wanted like, to. The only person who's, like, the best is Travis Scott. But, like, anyone can do that. Yeah, that's true. But they're always... Like, and, like, and, that's yeah, what... yeah. and, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, he can do a bit of both. But there's not that many people who can do both, I guess, is what I'm saying. It was cool mm-hmm. that if you... Like, someone like Drake and Cole can do both. But all like Yadi yeah. and all these other people, I don't keep picking on Yadi all the time, but that ilk of motherfucker can't <laughs> come and he tried. And it's like every time we play the secret recipe, like Tiff like fast forwards it to Cole's verse because she can't stand it. Yes. Good um, work. And I'm like, it means well, but you, you, you can't. Like you can't do it like they can. Like this, like I think the evil ways is just, it's like, it's, it's brilliance in writing in that style. And I think it's so rooted in early Kanye and Fonte. Like, I feel like that was, like, the architects for that stuff, what they were doing. And that's, like, our shit. So that's why I think it's resonating so heavily. It's just, it's brilliant. Yeah. That's fair. But the thing is with Yachty as well, I am going to be more excited when he releases now because I know this is his style. He's going to try and keep Yeah, maybe he'll get better. And I'm more excited at this because I'm not excited about the old stuff he was doing. I I wasn't a big fan of that. I right. always like you because you seem cool, but like he, that wasn't it. But like the secret recipe style, even though he's not gonna be coal level ever. Well, I don't know ever. That's that's bad to say. No, not necessarily ever. But like I he's he just. Yeah. It, I, I'm excited to see him keep trying that because I'm I'm still a fan of his verse. Now, obviously, it's not coal level, but like I'm still a fan of it. That's fair. It's going to be interesting either way. I think at the very least, if it encourages more people to try it and actually say things, really, it's yeah. not even about the style, like soul beats. So that's cool if it was more music like that around. But I want to see people tell tell me your story. Tell me about you. I don't know if I'm going to listen to music. Like, let me learn something. I would rather listen to a podcast. Me too. So teach Love me something. Learning. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And I feel like even us, like having time off now, I haven't said anything for a while. Like a lot's happened in life. So I probably could deliver more value in music than if I just kept saying the same things over and over, which somewhat feels like that listening to our old music, because we're finding what we're going through in life. This we're doing such volume and not a lot is changing as fast enough to, you know what I'm saying? Like usually between projects, like one's completely different than the, the artist's life changes. And the next one is a whole other vibe. So either way, um, that is super fire. So actually we've, we're really like taking a long time just to do these two different things. Like most of the episodes. So, uh, do we want to go through... Okay, let's keep going on this part, and then maybe we even uh, pull up for the next one. Um, yeah. uh, the first person shooter video they dropped as well. Mm-hmm. And that was yeah. a uh, controversial one. So maybe let's Best see... Best da- video of the year. I can't think of anything that's been better than that since Life's Good. Uh, no shit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a very, very, very interesting video um i'm trying to scroll back to what i said to this cunt in the, in the group eyes it was pretty funny i was like just trying to be switzerland and just being like my, let's talk about yeah, this on the pod you were switzerland af and it was great i fucking watched on a one shot view because i have seen it again because you know you gotta give yeah. it a couple of tries you gotta so like i don't know um let me get my receipts up then <laughs> wow i love it 
this cat? Oh, we got beef this evening, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Mate. Let me see. Hey. So I, I know oh, why that yeah. was relevant. No. So I think, <laughs> I think my first, I started off with this. Honestly, what the actual fuck is this? And there was a bunch of laughing, crying, shrug emojis. What? And you're like, is it not good? I'm like, have a gaze. And then Dan's, you know, I, it's so good. J. Cole doing stupid shit. Drake's bringing this out of him. It's, you know, they should do a, they should be rap duo, uh, should be a rap duo full time. And so I said, <laughs> I was kind of like, I know, I must have been having a, a quite a day because I was at, I was, you know, having a, a long work day that day. I said, I don't think I've seen more of a ridiculous, no, an extra ridiculous, over the top, distracting, overdone, over glorified CG video for this. He was having a bad day. Yeah. Honestly, it's actually jaw droppingly bad and corny. Like, why? I think it's not that good. Um, and then, <laughs> <laughs> I can't Damn. say that. Expletive, so expletive, deletive. Um, yeah. So I'm like keep table, it, keep table it tennis, my guy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Keep it PC for the thing. So table tennis, my guy, that's how soft Drake is. Office championships, fuck off. Ha ha. The amount of money and effort that's going into doing this video is fucking horrendous to me. And I think it's garbage overall. It doesn't fit the song and the feel of the mood that anything to do with the song. Y'all seeing that. The song is incredible. This video is a gigantic mess and a miss. And I felt like I blew all my steam off the top. First bang. So like that was me being like, and then Dan, what did you retort with, sir? And then I said, <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, I couldn't. And then I says to more. him, I says, <laughs> I says, <laughs> I said, I said, the fact it's stupid and over top doesn't and doesn't fit the vibe of the song is genius. The, and these are the things that you're criticizing it for. But this is what makes it good. Serious videos yeah. aren't sick anymore. You're not. You get nothing out of them except matching a face to the voice. Making a video ridiculous is entertaining, and you actually want someone to. <laughs> it actually makes someone to like want to watch it because oh. it's more than just someone rapping and it provokes conversation i agree but like yeah i i just i couldn't stop i said i said i couldn't stop laughing how corny and bad it was i imagine a 12 year old on youtube watching it going nuts for it like fapping off about how you know there's like there's a bunch of lols in there for regular shits like you know whatever but uh i don't know it it was just it was a lot for me and i was not ready for how overly done and like you know like i said so cg and so with the stadiums and the fake logos and the table tennis thing was like bro get the fuck out of here so i, I wanna... love tennis though but that's that's it but still dan sent this this is just to i'm just gonna stay switzerland on it all because i sort of agree with you both to be honest um dan sent this which was like a post on complex uh which i'm gonna see if i can pull it up a little bit oh, why is it working there you go and basically it explains the references in the song I saw that, yeah yeah so many so, good ones so half like of the half of them are half of them i did pick I, I didn't know them i didn't know this one okay yeah so the first so it was the uh they're right. playing chess which is like with uh ronaldo and messi then the spider-man meme which obviously we knew about that yeah um, the ping pong stuff, the table tennis was from the office. Yeah. Tight. Um, still a strange thing. And that's, it's not strange completely. But it's deep like, cut. People love that shit. I've never seen the office. So I don't it's know, a actually, cult no. Oh, so you didn't know who the guy was at the star. Which guy? The, the, who opened the video, the guy the on the guy phone. Who opened the video, the guy on the phone. That's, uh, his name's Kevin. Oh, I knew who, yeah. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah. Oh. He's just really iconic character. He's so funny. And he's a good right? actor anyway, but that's he's a great actor. Stuff. Yeah. Right, so that's that definitely ties it in. Um, yeah. Makes more sense now. And then, of course, the I forgot about this one, the Michael Jackson history. Corny, corny and funny, but the graphics, uh, you know, the CG is pretty tight. Yeah. So like, it's like without the, without all this context, this this made it like, okay, so there's a bunch of references. So whilst this one I do, here, yeah. sorry, bring that back up if you can, mate. That at the bottom, see that basketball court? Yes. That's, that's Regent Park. Yeah, that's, an, that's literally in between. Yeah. My, I ride my bike around right? there and do jumps and shit. That's a very famous uh, area, and right. that got revamped recently. I think Rich Kid had something to do with that. He had he raised money and did a whole bunch of shit. And, and it's uh, really nice now. It's, it's really. Yeah. Got a oh, we drove job. through it. 
on your Super birthday excited. note, taking you back. Remember, we dropped Dan off, and then we'd gone back to yours, and we saw it on the way. We were like, I was like, I hadn't seen it before. Yeah, in between, we were right, driving on Dundas. Yeah, it's fucking. Yeah. It's, it's it's cool. Super tight. But that's yeah. a really good thing to put in, um, in the video because that's you know, uh, relevant Toronto Cole, shit. It's relevant Toronto yeah, shit, yeah. And, and Cole loves mm. it, and he's obviously fucking there. So tight. Very cool. So either way, that was pretty cool. It was fun to discuss that and yeah. uh, see the arguments. Love a bit of that. Right. Um, the other Drake and Cole news uh, was that they're both going on tour. So Cole's jumping on a, another section of the It's All a Blur tour, uh, I guess, in lieu of 21. Um, and they're going to a bunch of smaller towns. The closest they were doing here was Buffalo, but it was there was some reason why we... Oh, because the we just missed out on the tickets. We are going to do it, and now it was like, Three hundred dollars for like nosebleeds or something. We're just like, uh, yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. I even checked. You know, when I was saying I was gonna get the UFC tickets, uh-huh. I checked it. I queued up, and it was harder to get. I swear to you, it's harder to get than the Drake tickets when I oh, first yeah. got the Drake tickets back in May. It was just like I went on it and straight away resell five hundred dollars. I'm like, what? Oh, like, I had the verified resell. That's what tips. Yeah. Resell five hundred dollars, and I was oh. like, no, I like this. Yeah, but, even the it reminds me of the Beyonce stuff. I think I just got lucky yeah. with all that shit. It's it's a lot, mm-hmm. so pretty cool that at least they're going that'd be like a fun tour actually so i wonder what they would do i really genuinely would have enjoyed going to that if we if we made it happen but not the end of the world um cole is finishing off the fall off album so i imagine there'll be a tour coming with that soon um the other thing we should definitely talk about looking at how many things we have in our list here the two things if i was going to choose a couple things were the andre 3000 came back with a flute album called new blue sun this is um let's uh let's bring that up in this bitch here okay hang on a second and uh so basically he started doing like he started posting and then he did a gq uh interview which was super interesting and um he was talking to the dude he was just like doing his laundry so now he lives in la because he was in new york and people just saw him around so now he's in la it's so just crazy. trying to he might be seeing three stacks like just doing his laundry or the thing like be like kind of crazy right I would lose my mind. Yeah, and I feel like he was able to get by. Like he, I'm sure, an hour and twenty seven minutes. I didn't know it was that long. Okay. Yeah. So basically, songs are like seventeen minutes. Yeah, the first one is oh, 12, 13, 10, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, maybe it's the last last one, seventeen minutes. Yeah. So basically, he started. He everyone knew that he was like, you know, catch him in a fucking laundromat, which is even weirder that you'd want to do that. But and then go, That's... he'd be outside and just play flute in the alleyway or whatever. And I don't know oh, why God. he's fucking with his flute, but that's his thing. And he said he felt that there was an album in him and he did this and didn't want to rap because he said he's 48. And he said, what am I going to talk about? Like needing a colonoscopy or my eyesight's getting bad. <laughs> Which people were sort of saying, well, you know, it's not like that simple. Like you could have talked about anything you like and we want that rap. But um, either way. Could have spoken about why he doesn't like to rap. It could even be that too, you know. That's the most but, fascinating thing. Definitely, what, it, it probably would be actually. But he decided to do this, and it's sort of like it's meditation music. If if you want to summarize it, like it's super song chill. Names are song it's names are very Panic at the Disco um, stuff. Right. Right? It's blocked by the screen. If I move all the shit, it'll fuck it up. But uh, I swear, I really want to make a rap album. But this is literally the way the wind blew me. This time is the first song. Wow. The slang word "pussy" rolls off the tongue with far better ease than the proper word "vagina." Do you agree? Wow! <laughs> that okay. night in Hawaii, when I turned into a panther and started making these low register purring tones, that I could dot dot dot. Oh, unless there's actually more. Rooting. Oh, oh, that I couldn't good. control. Shit was wild. Um, by Polo Disorder's daughter wears a three thousand shirt embroidered. <laughs> uh, ninety three till infinity and Beyonce. Uh, Gandhi Dalai Lama, your Lord and Savior J C slash Bundy Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wade and Gacy. Strange. And no. to you, gods to who? That's who's funny. The, who's, the, who's the last guy? John Wayne Gre- Gacy. No, it must be a serial killer, based yeah. on the other ones. And the last I love one is... that. Um, I love ants to. I can't read it from here, but ants to who? Gods ants to, to you, gods to who? Very cool. Such a good, that's a sick name. That's a bar. And dreams oh, once yeah. buried beneath the dungeon floor slowly sprout into undying gardens. And I think he said that was a reference to the Dungeon Family Studio and stuff. Oh. Um, which is pretty wow. sick. So it, it's a super interesting album. I don't know how much you need to. That's why I said to you, Noshi, if you hadn't heard it before the pod, if you listen to thirty seconds of it, you completely yeah, it quite, quite wild. 
you get the point. That's literally that for the whole time. So it's like super chill. Like if you're gardening or something, what, you know, uh, I might take my house to it tomorrow. I'll let you know how it goes next week. That would be cool, and you could probably that's just Tuesday, be in right. your thoughts and vibe out, and you know, like that's so what I cool. need to do. It's a much different headspace right. than when you're listening. And then I'll put on it. It's uh, a world domination because we're going to talk about it next week. Uh, we're doing CM Becker Volume sure. One next week. I'll listen um, to CM Volume One tomorrow, and I'll yes. tell you about it. Yeah. Next week. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. And then, but still go through like we just <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Jesus, not all about you, yeah, idiot. All about you. Fuck's Take sake. Head. We're going in chronological <sighs> order and. Yeah, exactly. tell, tell mum on the blower. Tell her, I'm telling her. You know, a bit of cunt, mate. <sighs> She's going to be so mad at you. Um, she should be cross. She should be so super cross. cross. So then, all right, that's our Andre <laughs> 3000 stuff. Like, how much more do yeah. we want to go? Well, there's a few other small things. Uh, uh, you know what? I reckon we can push through these. Fuck it. Um, Wayne and 2 Chains dropped Colly Grove 2, second album. I listened to maybe a third to a quarter of it or whatever. And it yeah. was. Uh, it was it was just like mid like like it's so opposite to any Wayne has probably had the best run of features in 2023 than he has in a while it's been and disgusting it it was the the beat the production was was mid af and just it just seemed like silly it just seemed like below both of their abilities from what i heard so far it's, it's a notion you know i when i saw it i was kind of like i never expected anything that good like I, I really didn't expect. Yeah. Like so it's kind of, especially where I was at, like, listen, I'm not going to turn off this new Drake thing with Cole and listen to this. Like, yeah, I just knew it wouldn't it. be that sick. Like, I just knew it wouldn't be that sick. But can someone explain what was this like cinematic thing they're doing? Because I watched it and I just didn't understand the cinematic thing. What do you mean? Uh, oh. I think Notion sent it in uh, Instagram. It was that like, narrated by Fifty Cent, and it was yeah. like a oh. trailer thing. I didn't really understand. I mean, it just looks like a trailer for the album but it's for the oh, carly grove okay, thing okay. Like a visualizer but it's like a, this, they've uh, done a really good thing and 50s of funny can't doing some great narration and i don't know it just seems like they're doing promotion for it the in a post fun was way. like oh they created a cinematic the album universe or something i was like what yeah it's weird dude because like oh here quality, it is. Okay. quality of that doesn't add up to the quality of the album i haven't heard all the songs but oh i yeah it's like this little mini like <sighs> I started watching this. I could pull it up on the screen, but I guess we can't play it. It looks like it's a yeah. a mini doco type of thing. It's not complex not, music. Like I, I watched some of the slides, and it's just like I, I, I don't really know. It's a lot of nothing. I don't really get it. Okay, I I thought they were just like clips. Maybe they're all separate clips. No, no, they're they're all like they're all their own individual clip. Ah, oh, they're not like a thing. Okay, I thought it was like a, like a video like broken up into... Gotcha. Well... That's what's confusing me the most. Well, yeah. I'm, I'll give it I'll give it a crack and listen to the rest, but I think because the Drake shit was so dope, it's pretty tough to compete with that this week, so I think I'll just, over the next week, yeah, I'll give, it, give it another crack. Um, so that was that. There's probably not much else to say. Uh, Little Brother announced that they're dropping their May the Lord Watch documentary on Black Friday. Which is very cool. Which I think is next week, this week or next week. This coming Friday. It's this Friday. Black Friday. Wait, I thought Black Friday was last Friday. No, it's the one. Um, oh, it... it's the twenty fourth. Yeah, so that means it's this week. Okay, cool. So that means it's dropping this week, and I think it's dropping on YouTube, which is pretty sick. So I'm excited for that. That'd be fun. Nice. Um, I think it said telling their full story and shit. <laughs> so very very cool. Because I guess they've been around. This is their twenty year anniversary. I think it was two thousand and two. Was the listening, if I'm not mistaken. Fuck it. Oh um i know right jeez wow. um i don't know if we even care but megan the stallion's boyfriend that partisan fontaine dude did a diss track to her um kind of like responding to the weird. shit that she said in COVID. Yeah. it's a bit weird but i don't know even it's know interesting. How... He's just basically saying she's lying about everything so i don't know who to believe i don't know anything yeah i just yeah so whatever i don't just... know enough about anything so so it's bad to just s the f up essentially better better, better. Uh, now our old boy Snoop pulled a little bit of a fast one on cunts. He posted but the other hey, day on. saying he was quitting the smoke, I think he said. And it was like, this is weird. Why would you mm. announce that? And then he drops a video today and it was to promote a smokeless fireplace for like outdoors called like solo stove or something. I'm like, what? Like it was very, he has to own the company to put that level. Yeah. Of, like, Cause that's like serious. That's, that's like, his brand, bro. Like his, his whole brand. entire yeah. brand. Yeah. Like I'm trying to even think what would even be 
be close to that. Is that that's like Apple you announcing that's on Twitter. What it actually is? It's yeah. like Apple. On, yeah, yeah. You didn't know that. It was just... It was I just haven't seen fire anything fire. about it. I've, I've, yeah. I've, it was, Before he actually stopped smoking. No, 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 no. no. It's just a fire. No, I, I mean, you, I was waiting for the thing, but like I haven't seen it because like I follow him on, on everything. So I just hasn't... I, haven't seen I think it. I saw it today because it was trending on Twitter. I think yeah, people I are just like, this also, fucking uh, guy. On the trails it's, all day. But it's, it's it's a lot because it's like it's literally I'm like if Apple all. announced they would stop production, like yeah. and they'll never release another what? iPhone again. Dude, he has a weed company. Dude, there's no way they can't not smoke. It's I too, knew it was too strange. Like, it was like it was a funny response. Um, Josh Kesselman, the guy who owns Raw Papers, he's a huge pothead. He loves it, and he was like, uh, he put out a very similar black and white photo on his Instagram to say, uh, "Sorry guys, still smoking." And you know, kind of like a funny little re- like response riff off that. To that. Yeah, a riff. Yeah, exactly. It was pretty funny. So, yeah, very, uh, very. Just funny a weird choice. Well, he's known to do whatever it takes for a bag. So, I mean, I guess it's not entirely yeah. like shocking. But this was the furthest we've seen him take it. Like, it's pretty hectic. Pause. Pause. Yeah, I could say that. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, pause. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. bro. But like, um, he doesn't own it. I'm googling it now. He okay. Own it. Speaking of pause, can I jump in real quick? Do you watch <laughs> It Is What It Is with Cameron and Mace? Do you watch that podcast? I do not, I but I, I do want to. Do yeah, really want to start so sick. There's an episode. This is part of my fucking okay. During the week, I watched that fucking uh podcast. I, I watched like three or four episodes actually. Motherfucker, the Jack Harlow episode is hilarious. Okay. Um, it's a it's Jack a sports Harlow's podcast, a right? Sports podcast. They touch yeah. on music. It's majority sports, and then they banter for fucking ages in the middle. But uh, that is such a fun podcast to watch. Cameron is ridiculous. There's occasional times when I'm watching, and I catch times when he doesn't pause it, but then he rips the guest for not getting it, and vice versa. So I want to like make a excuse me. I think I was thinking of making like a fucking Instagram or a YouTube channel where I clap back at Cameron missing the pauses because he's so like on the guest pause and uh making sure they get it and it's just it's it's phenomenal that'd be cool for like right? a short or like a reel just be like cameron's Ex- missed pauses yeah that's what that's exactly what i think it might the whole thing might be because like cam's, they rip cam's missed pause yeah that's good yeah, like cam it. and mace cam and mace are really like super on each other pause and they're, they're if somebody misses one they're, they're just gonna fucking rinse you for it pause <laughs> so yeah, exactly so it's very fun is what it is i like that uh, a fun thing to watch we just got onto it in the last few days man so that was right. part of my earlier news but this is more valid more relevant now. okay so anyway definitely check, check that, that out that's fire it. um love it love it okay this came up today i'll keep this really quick because this is just f- i don't know if many well, other people think this is cool today. uh shake shack dropped merch piss off <laughs> i'm copping mm-hmm. but i can't where it's are my mac is shoes I don't like fuck McDonald's. Honestly, fuck McDonald's. Right in the fucking. I can't wait to cop. Oh, I can't wait to cop. I'm but, so moist. Why do they have that hoodie? Bottom left. Bottom left. The hoodie. Yeah, the hoodie's yeah, cool. I like the, the the varsity why? shirts. But but, but 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 like why? But why Shake Shack? Gonna, oh, once you've had this. it, you'll like. Oh, it's a religious experience. Shake Shack is a cult. Yeah, it's I love it. It's the why thing. Why merch though? Because people love it as. Yeah. I'd say because shack. look at that varsity thing. That is oh. so funny. Ninety dollars. Suck my dick, bro. I'm gonna get the bro, t-shirts. I'd, I'd get that for night. I'd pay yeah, night for yeah. that. For life. The the shipping's expensive, so we're gonna do a group order. Every, everyone has uh, merch. Even KFC have merch. I'll tell you what, like, you know, that's so it's so fire. I love it. It's the greatest thing on earth. So uh, we should, uh, maybe drip out the enterprise. Good enterprise, you know. Mm-hmm. We should get Brad the small fry baby onesie. Oh, I like that. Yo, I'll wear it. Fucking wear it. You better. Um, I think you should. Christmas, Christmas sorted. Christmas sorted. Okay. The last thing I think uh, we probably won't go to the food. Just bring it, ship it up to Canada, mate. Some what? Get your baby onesie. So give me, give me some food. Ship it up to Canada. Awesome. I haven't had it yet. You've got a PR. Rent a car. Go to Buff. Never had it. Just go. No, I have it. Yeah, I'll just get, I'll rock, get I'll, it. I'll, I'll fucking, yeah, Actually, not Buffalo. Just, you have to go to Rochester. Yeah. And it'd be for you. It's like a two and a half hour drive for me. So it'd be like a three and a half hour drive for you. Plus your uh, immigrant time in um, in in the border. But the most worth a thing you've ever done in your life. 
It's definitely worth it. It's okay. so fucking It's ridiculous. I, I can't even express. Um, the last thing I think we'll probably go on now is because there's the Diddy and Cassie stuff, but I guess that's kind of been like sorted. Basically, Diddy's fucked, beat the shit out of Cassie, sex trafficking, assault, rape, all sorts of crazy shit. Like horrible, horrible. Uh, she sued him and he settled out of court on a civil suit. So that's fucked up. Um, but the last thing to wrap up now since we're at one and a half is uh, so Ye and Ty Dolla Sign dropped the first single with uh, Dirk, features Lil Dirk, called Vultures. And they're recording their collab album in Saudi Arabia. They got this whole fucking setup out there, which is pretty sick. So Same. it seems. And Ye is cussing again. And he hasn't cussed for a while, but he's saying, he's like. Cussing. Oh yeah, I got, my friend sent me the uh, the dirty version of um, of the song because I'd seen like the I think I saw like a radio version which was all bleeped and then um, because there were so many bleeps, my boy, my boy Cam shouts to Cam, he's always obsessed with this. He was like, "Oh, I wonder if because uh, there's so many bleeps, maybe that means that maybe cussing Ye is back." And then he sent me the CD quality version. Um, and it's, uh, I'll just drop it on Facebook. I could messenger, I could forward it to y'all if you want to hear it, but, um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's really good. It's a cool track. It's, uh, it's interesting. So I think it's going to be a very, very interesting project. Don't know when Sick. it's going to drop. It was supposed to do that listening to a arena thing in like November 3rd, I think it was. So yeah, now it's a few weeks past that. So, um, we'll have to see, but, uh, that's pretty sick. I'm excited. It's going to be sick. Um, Yeah. Very, very keen on that. But look, okay, I think we got through all the shit, really. That's really it. The last, oh, yeah, Tyler, the creator, did a Nardwire interview that seemed cool. But, um, you know, go check that out. But, yeah, that's basically uh, it, you fucking mad dogs. Um, let's do a fummy. Oh, fummy. Oh. All right, all right, all right. How all am right. I supposed to get these other shoes? They're so far away. They're so far. Okay, okay. Far away. I'm only one call. Only one call away. Are I you? think the album's going to come out soon. That's Which one? I'm gonna, the Ye one. Boy. And get my, get my mug with no handle. Oh, yeah, you're going to need it. Cheeky okay. mug. Ready? Boom. Um, Daniel, where can everyone find you online? Uh, HDFGXMING, as you heard at the very start. If you go to the start, 30 seconds in, HDFGXMING. Instagram, Twitch, everything. What about you guys? Oh, push all, push all. At Notion Baby on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. At Notion MTB on YouTube and Instagram. Get a dog up, ya. See if easy. CWFO on Instagram and Twitter. And CWTMF on Facebook. And uh, if I can watch the other one, TikTok. Sikans, thank you for watching and listening. If you enjoyed the episode, smash mm. the thumbs, hit the sub, hit the mm. bell. Ding mm. dong. So you know when the new new drops. Follow us everywhere at the Mover Fam and at Bad Habits Pod on IG. We drop in mm. every Monday evening, usually kind of late, so then, you know, nice and fresh for fucking Tuesday morning for you, mates. And uh, you guys enjoy your week. Be good to your mom, and we'll see you in the next one. Get a fat dog. Fat dog. Fat dog. Fat dog. Wolf. 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 See you guys next week, guy. Bye.